escape yet. Can I have another blanket, please? I'm freezing. Not very enterprising, are you? Hasn't Daddy taught you any survival techniques? How do you know so much about my father? Call it a hobby of mine. Who the hell are you? The joke is, so far as your dad's concerned, I'm nobody. He doesn't even know I exist. But he will do. After today, he'll know what this is all about. What are you up to? Just eat your breakfast. Smile. A kidnap without a ransom note. It doesn't make any sense. I'll find out what they want at the meeting. Well, be careful. No heroics. Will's life's at stake. I'm hardly going to take any risks. Well, I can't understand why they've taken him. I think we both do. Only neither of us wanted to admit it. It's me they're after. I've dreaded something like this happening for years. I thought the worries would be over once you retired. We always knew it came with the territory. Sadly, some of the people I've come across have got very long memories. It's not someone from your days in Ireland, is it? This isn't their style. Well, then who? Oh, I wish I knew. Right now, I feel pretty damn powerless. Don't say that. I promise I'll bring Will back safe and unharmed. It's my fault he's in this mess. Why? Come on, Em. Off to school. Remember? Business as usual. Please be careful, Dad. I want my brother back. Come on, Robert! We'll be late! All right, Dad. Do you fancy lunch at the Woolpack? Well, I'll be busy today. What with Rachel having the afternoon off and you at the post office. Oh, it might jolly up the day. I might need it after spending a morning in the company of the delectable Mrs Windsor. Yeah, well, at least to get you out of the house for a few days. We did say that would be a good thing. Yeah, I know. I'm glad we started to talk, Jack. Good. Whatever problems there are between us, we'll sort them out. We always have. Ready. See you later. Hey. Morning. Morning, Rachel. Hiya. Hi. So, are you looking forward to James's birthday party? Not really. Oh, well, the kids will have fun. <laughs> what kids? There'll only be James and Joseph there. The rest will be adults. <laughs> Typical Kim. Invited a few business contacts, has she? Well, I won't put it past her. I was thinking about ringing up with a fib, saying Joseph was running a temperature. <laughs> it won't be that bad. Spending a whole afternoon with Kim and Christopher? Well, here's some good news for you. Jack and I have started to talk. I'm not sure we got very far, but at least I know we're not going to split up or anything. Good. Thanks for your support, Rachel. It's great having a friend I can trust. Well, that can go to a charity shop. Kim? Oh, he's got mountains of them upstairs, and they're all British-made. Only the best for you, eh? <laughs> uh, happy birthday. Rugrat. Got a cheque for me yet? Go to hell. Now you know the deal, Kim. Either I get my 350,000 back or you go down for misappropriation of company funds. survey map. Yeah, I've got it. OK, then. Look for the boundary wall at SE 296415. Go past the third gate. You've got two hours. And don't be late. It wouldn't be good for Will's health. Is he all right? Can I talk to him? Hello. Hello! What can I do for you? Well, you can start by showing me the ropes. What? Show me how the till works, where everything is. Vic's asked you to work here while he's away. 
And he hasn't told you? I can see this is going to be even better than I imagined. I'll kill him. And why did you say yes? You can't be that hard up for money. Jack thought it would be a good idea. Just tell him not to think in future. It's only for a few days, Viv. Let's try and get along, or at least try and be civil. I suppose we'll have to. Hey, Betty. Where I'm going's like Disneyland for grown-ups. A beer festival. You're sick of the sight of ale within a couple of days. Believe me, I will. <laughs> Do try and come back in a reasonably fit state for work. Well, I can't promise I'll help. Alan, who have you got in to cover for Terry? Joe. Joe? Yes. Well, no offence, like, but she's not what you call experienced staff, is she? We've got a drink promotion tomorrow night. And who's going to do the ale delivery? We will manage. Let me explain. You and Joe are going to spend the next few days just eyeing each other up while I am permanently rushed off my feet. Well, it's not my problem. I'm gone. You carrying a torch for this biker woman? We are just good friends and her name is Joe. Oh, I Well, think on. It makes for a tense atmosphere in workplace when colleagues get involved with one another. I mean, look what happened to him. Betty, will you mind your own business? And all right, Mandy, I'll get an extra person behind the bar, so stop whinging. And you, just push off and enjoy yourself. Your wish is my command. Bye, y'all. I'll see you later. Have some use to check the foot rod. Yeah, if you get back first, get that kettle on. I'm patched. Aye. You made the right decision. What would you know, Ned? How could you live with your conscience knowing that you've broken your best friend's marriage up? Would it be any worse than Jack living a lie? What are you on about? He doesn't like Sarah very much. He certainly doesn't love her anymore. You believe what you want, but at the end of the day, he's done the decent thing by his family. And that's all that really matters, isn't it? You see, that's where we're different. I believe that loyalty matters more than anything. And that's consigned you to 20 years with Jan? You'll leave my marriage out of this, Rachel. Me and Jan get on just fine. Sure, Ned. I just wonder what would have happened if someone had fallen for you. I reckon you'd have been out of your marriage like a shot. <laughs> oh, that's where you're wrong. I think that's what your problem is, Ned. You've been jealous of Jack. Yes. <laughs> he takes a good picture, doesn't he? Have a good look at the background in the photos. Maybe you'll find some clues. What do you want? You'll find out soon enough. But first, you've got another little journey to make. Reference SE 228479. You've got exactly one hour. So start jogging, Major. Let me talk to Will first. OK. Dad, you... What do you think you're playing at? Getting her to work here? Just for a few days. Of all the people in the village to ask. Everyone else turned me down. But why didn't she? That's the question. Never thought she might be planning some horrible revenge on me over that business with Andy. Oh, don't be so ridiculous. Right, better get myself ready for the off. Having yourself a nice little holiday. Look, it's going to be lectures and seminars all day long till the early evening. After that, I'll just be ready for my bed. Well, you could have given me more notice. It was a one-off opportunity. I just had to be decisive. Oh, well, that makes a change, I suppose. You still haven't shown me the brochure. Oh, um, I packed it in my case. Uh, you know, in case I wanted to look at it. Right, well, uh, I better get going. Coach leaves in an hour. Where do you want me to stick these? Don't tempt me. Hey, up, sir. I've got a in Biff. Oh, I never thought I'd live to see it there. Ah, oh, Biff, just the man. Cheers. A any chance of you working behind the bar for the next few days? Well, I could do with the money. Starting tomorrow night? Um, I'll have to work out with Linda, but, yeah, I can't see it being a problem. Right, cheers. Biff's standing in for Terry. Good. Now all you need to do is appoint a temporary acting manager. He's only gone for a few days. It's the principal, Alan, and I am senior. But it's all right, I don't want any more money. All right. You are now temporary acting manager for the next few days. Oh, thanks, Alan. But you have to cash up, clear up and lock up. But it won't go on till midnight. Well, there you go. Responsibilities of management. <sighs> Here you are. Oh, thanks.
Get ready to tug your forelocks. Here come the Aristos. <laughs> Do we have to stay? Can't we just wait for the present opening and then clear up? So willing. Kim's my partner. Anyway, there's a business matter I need to discuss. You know I don't like that woman. She's shifting. For goodness sake, Tara. This is going to be such a bore. Thank you. Lovely to see you. I like the dress. Thanks. Come and have a drink. <laughs> I've got a little surprise lined up for you and James. Uh, it had better be a cheque for 180 grand or you're in big trouble. See ya. Cheers, man. Excuse me, sir. Would you mind moving your things? This seat's taken. Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks, love. You? I don't believe it. In tow, Riker. Viv thinks you're off to a convention for small businesses. If I knows you was going on this trip, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. She's going to go ape when she finds out. If you say one word to her, you're a dead man. Oh, I still fancy your chances, dear. Gentlemen, please. Excuse me, I want to sit somewhere else. Well, I'm sorry, the trip's fully booked and everyone's in their allotted seats. Well, I refuse to sit with him. You're disturbing the other passengers. If you make trouble, I'll be forced to ask you to leave the coach. I pay good money for this. We're on here for a long trip, so I suggest you two calm down and sort out your differences. Well, I'm not going to let him spoil me first holiday for years. Ready for another? No, no, I'm fine. Yes, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, with principal investment. You're having a nice birthday, little man. I think he needs changing. No, I think he's just a little bit tired. Come on. Oh. Splendid, it's arrived. What do you mean? My little surprise. <whistles> Hello? No slacking, Major. If you don't get to the next rendezvous on time, poor old Will will be brown bread. Let's finish the games. I know it's me you want. Turn Will over safe and secure and you can have me. But that would be no fun, Major Cairns. You just don't get it, do you? I want to make you suffer a bit more first. Who are you? If you tell me who you're working for, perhaps we can talk this out. I'm working for no one but myself. Just look upon me as the avenging angel. I've come to pay you back for making my life a nightmare. Here he is, the little beauty. James's birthday present. Is this a joke? What's the problem? James is one year old. As my old dad used to say, you can't get them on the saddle soon enough. It's not even broken in yet. Thought I'd leave that to the expert. Must have cost you a fortune. Glad to see you've got money to throw around. I think we should talk later, don't you? <laughs> nice one, Alex. Back yet? No. What are you doing home? I told the teacher I didn't feel well. Oh, Emma. I thought we agreed it had to be business as usual. I couldn't concentrate for a second. All I could think about was Will. What might be happening to him? Don't. Why aren't they back yet? Your father knows what he's doing. What did he mean this morning? About Will being in this mess was his fault. He's blaming himself for not having found Will before now. Tell me the truth, Mum. That is the truth. Mum, I'm really scared. It's going to be all right. What if... What if they've killed him? Now get that thought out of your head right now. Any minute now, Will's going to come walking through that door with your dad. Believe me.
A toast, if you will, to my son's first birthday. To James. James. To James. James. <laughs> Look at that mountain of presents. It's obscene. Good one from Alex, though. With any luck, it might eat, dear James. Christopher, I feel sorry for the poor lad. He's going to grow up to be so spoiled, just like his half-brother. You never were very good at sarcasm, were you? Surprising, really, considering I lived with a master. Oh, for God's sake, can't someone shut him up? There we are. Mm. I do appreciate you helping out like this. Oh, it'll be a laugh. I'd, um, I'd like to stay over whilst I'm working here. Um, yes, yes, of course. I'll see if Betty's got the time to make out the spare room. I don't want to stay in the spare room. Uh, no offence, like, but is anyone here who minds to pull the fingers out? Because we're opening half an hour and I'm passing myself going back trying to change barrels and bottle up. I I'm sorry, Mandy. I'll come and give you a hand. Is everything all right? Yeah, everything's just fine. <sighs> Goodbye, Tara. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, we need to have a word. See you at the car, darling. Why I wouldn't come up with the money? Frankly, yes. Don't you have cash flow problems now and again? This isn't the way I normally do business. Look, I'm your partner. How about a bit of trust? You put me in a very precarious position, particularly with Christopher. Don't follow. Too boring to go into. Suffice to say, this check solves everything. Let's agree on one thing. Second we're off this coach, we go our separate ways. Fine by me. We meet each other in the hotel at the beer fest. We don't even acknowledge each other. Damn right. And on the trip back, you're going to be down the front and I'm up the back. I'd rather travel in the boot than sit with you again. He knows a nout about her. She could be a gold digger. Turner's hardly a millionaire. No, but he's not short of a bob or two. I thought you said he told you they were only good friends. That's what Prince Charles said about Camilla. Well, if I were Turner, I'd grab her with both hands. Well, you're not. So keep your eyes averted and sup your ale. I'll do it now. Ladies, I I'm sorry to interrupt your conversation, but... Um... Mandy, can I have a word? As long as it's not about Uncle Zach's tab, I'll meet you in extra hours, yeah. <laughs> See ya. There's no peace for the wicked. Books to do tonight. See ya. Mandy, I want your advice. This is a bit awkward and, and it's totally confidential. But Joe wants to take our relationship further. So what's the problem? No, I mean further, further. You mean...? Yes. You old dog! <laughs> well, that's the trouble, I'm not. I mean, it's been years since I've... Well, you know. Well, it's just like riding a bike. It's just something you don't forget. Frightened of making a fool of myself. Alan, you can't be a mug all your life. Get in there. It was a wild goose chase. I'm sorry. Is Will all right? He's still alive. I spoke to him on the phone. Well, how did he sound? What did he say? He's in good spirits and he says they're treating him OK. Look. You can see he's safe. Oh, my God. Who the hell are these people? What do they want from us? I'm none the wiser. My hope was I could work out who's behind this. Give me a chance to find out what all this is about. You're a liar. What? Why won't he tell us? I know as much as you. They don't want Will. This is about what you used to do in the army. It's you they want, not Will. What did you do, Dad, to make people want to kidnap Will? I'm doing my best to sort this out. Who are you, Dad? What are you? Oh, Mandy's gone. I've locked up. Joe, I, I can't. I, I can't go through with this. Oh, don't worry. The last thing I want is for you to feel threatened. I think scared is the word. 
It's been a long time, you see. Look, if you want, we can just fall asleep together every night. There's no pressure from me. Joe, look at me. I'm a fat old man. I've managed to spend years on this earth and still not be comfortable with myself. And then look at you. You're, you're beautiful. Look inside your head, Alan Turner. You're sensitive, kind, wise. You make me laugh. You make me feel good about myself. You're the one who's beautiful. Why are you playing these games? Why do you hate us so much? Go to sleep. I mean, what's the point in giving my dad the runaround today? You think your dad's a regular little hero, don't you? You're so wrong. Don't talk rubbish. I'll tell you what today was about. Showing you that he's a nothing. He couldn't even track down a teenage girl. What the hell have you got against my dad? Plenty. Does Guatemala mean anything to you? He did some work there few months back. What sort of work? Security. That's all I know. <laughs> then let me fill you in on a few details. He was there to help smuggle a drug dealer out of the country. My father? <laughs> no way. It went wrong. The guy your father went with got killed because of your dad. I'm not listening to this. For one, my dad wouldn't get mixed up with people like that. Number two, <laughs> he's not a coward. I don't know the details, but I know it's true. You're lying. How could you possibly know what my dad was doing in Guatemala? The British consul told me. Oh, right. Just rang you up, did they? They rang my mum, actually, but I picked up the phone. They called about my father. And what's he got to do with Guatemala? Plenty. He was the guy your father left to die. <laughs> 